Hi folks, it is me, Jeff's voice avatar, here to dive deeper into quantum sensing with you. Last time on From Know How to Wow, we simplified some of the principles a bit too much. Today we'll try to fill in some gaps and learn about an important effect called the linear Zeeman effect. Also, besides diamonds and lasers, you can also use a microwave source if you want to build a sensor like our Bosch colleague Ricardo. You may already know him from our previous episode. From know how to wow. AI hosted deep dive. If you haven't listened to the last episode, quantum sensing is a technology that will make sensors much more, well, sensitive. A team at Bosch Quantum Sensing works on a magnetic field quantum sensor that is more than 1,000 times more sensitive than current state-of-the-art sensors. Ricardo Cipolletti is a physicist on that team. He explains the measurement principle of a quantum magnetic field sensor. This is based on spin interaction. The spin is a small magnetic moment, and this allows you, by its interaction, to measure magnetic fields. The underlying effect is the Zeeman effect, and it's actually describing the coupling of angular momentum to the spin. The Zeeman effect was first discovered by Dutch physicist Peter Zeeman. It gained him the Nobel Prize in physics in 1902. It describes the splitting of spectral lines caused by magnetic fields. In our case, it affects the energy levels of free electrons inside a diamond. That's the quantum system that Ricardo and his colleagues use. The Zeeman splitting means that the energy levels that those electrons can assume get split into multiple levels, depending on the electron spin and the magnetic field. We have a triplet in the ground state. So we have three states that we can start from and they have different magnetic quantum numbers. The ground state is split into three different states. Ricardo calls them M is zero for the original ground state, and the two additional states that are caused by the magnetic field he calls M is plus minus one. In the quantum sensor, electrons are being excited by pumping them to a higher energy level. That is achieved by using a green laser. Depending on where you start, you end up in a different state in the excited state. The excited states are split into zero and plus minus one as well. After a while, the electrons will decay from this excited state back to the ground state. What happens during this decay depends on which Zeeman state they're on, whether it's MS0 or MS minus one. The former makes it more likely that a red photon will be emitted during the decay. The latter is more likely to not cause the emission of a visible photon. You have the radiative decay, which emits a photon, and you have a second type of decay where the excited state decays over some phonon levels and then it decays in a dark state. So we do not detect any visible photon. So we can distinguish between these two types of decay. So quite simply, just by looking at the system, it's easy to see in which state it is. Of course, instead of looking, engineers use a photodiode. It measures the amount of light emitted from the quantum system. So we know if there's no radiation or fewer radiation, then we are in the plus minus one state. And that's exactly where they want to be. You want to have as many nitrogen vacancies as possible in the plus minus one state or in one of those two states. The system should go dark. No more red light fluorescence because all of the free electrons are on a Zeeman level created by the magnetic field that the sensor is supposed to measure. In order to get to this behavior, one more element is needed. What we do in a steady state, we apply the microwave. The microwave is actually tuned to the energy that is the same as the level splitting of the Zeeman splitting. So what we can do is we can bring our system from the MS0 state to the MS plus minus one state because we match this energy. The microwave source can be adjusted so that it pumps the electrons just by the right amount. So this means when we apply our microwave to the correct frequency, so to the frequency that is the same as the energy of the Zeeman splitting, then we bring all of our population from the MS0 to the MS plus minus one state. Or to look at it the other way around, 
If the photoelectrode detects that there is a minimum of fluorescence, that means that all of the electrons are in the plus minus one state, which in turn means that the microwave has been tuned to just the right frequency to match the Zeeman splitting. Because the Zeeman splitting depends on the magnetic field, the strength of the field can be calculated from the microwave frequency. We can use this for measurement because you then just change the frequency till you are at your sweet spot where the fluorescence drops because the frequency of the microwave corresponds to a certain energy. In the end, it's just a frequency sweep and some math. As simple as that. If you want to know the math, here you go. So the splitting is twice a uh, gyromagnetic ratio times the magnetic field. So by knowing the difference between plus and minus one, you can absolutely measure the magnetic field. All the quantum physics, and now we're adding math to the mix as well. I know it can be tough, especially on a podcast. Well, I actually don't know anything. I'm just a virtual voice avatar. I don't even have ears to listen to a podcast. But I digress. The point is, at least on the surface, the math isn't that complicated because it's linear, which Ricardo also appreciates. What you have is a nice linear slope where you can measure. Another advantage of using the Zeeman effect to measure a magnetic field is that it can be quite robust. Factors that could influence the measurement can easily be eliminated. This is also thanks to the splitting of the energy levels into plus one and minus one. So we get a positive and a negative resonance. So we can also use this to calibrate because you just measure the splitting. So the difference between the two resonances, but you don't measure any deviation that comes from an, a different source. What could be, for example, temperature. The quantum sensor's own magnetic field can be disregarded that way too. It becomes part of a base background field that practically disappears by calibrating the sensor. And once you know this, once you have an initial calibration, you just measure the splitting between two energy levels. And this tells you about the absolute magnetic field. So you don't need to recalibrate. You just once need to know what is your initial field. The Zeeman splitting has been used to measure magnetic fields for many years. On our previous episode, Shuko and Jeff, your From Know How to Wow hosts talked about medical imaging technologies like MRI or magnetic resonance imaging. They told us that it is one application that makes use of the Zeeman effect today. Another is in astronomy, where it helps measure the giant magnetic fields of sunspots. And now you know everything about how quantum magnetic field sensors use the Zeeman effect. Well, almost. In the end, you don't do it as simple as we are explaining it. So you have more energy levels that you can use. So you have more peaks and you can look at all of them because you get one peak, one resonance for each transition, for each crystal dimension, a direction of the diamond too. There's always more to learn. Even this deep dive episode can't replace a PhD in quantum physics. But we came close. Next month, Shuko and Jeff will be back with From Know How to Wow that covers technology that many of you will soon see on a regular basis. At least if you use ride-hailing services. This piece of tech will welcome you with a smile.